Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be watching some more Star Trek, the original series, season three, and we are on episode nine. The episode is called the Tholian Web, or the Tholian Web. I think it's Tholian, I don't know. The Tholian Web. I have no idea what that means. So I guess we're gonna have to watch to find out. So let's watch. The Tholian Web. Hope you guys enjoy. See you in the comments. And thank you, as always, for watching. The Enterprise is approaching the last reported position of the starship Defiant. Hmm. Hunting down another starship. According to our instruments, space itself is literally breaking up. We're losing power in the warp engines. And I cannot find out the cause. Captain, visual detection of an object dead ahead. It's a giant green hand. Oh! <laughs> The green <laughs> Federation starship. We see it, but our sensors indicate it is not there. <laughs> I miss Apollo. <laughs> what a crazy guy. The Defiant. Well, I hope everyone's okay in there. I mean, every time we we find like we chase after or search for a missing starship, they're always all in trouble and dead. Whoa! What the heck are these? Look at those tubes! What? That looks so weird. Oh, I'm surprised there's something solid to stand on. That thing looked like it was not not solid object. Oh. Oh, I like how the lighting is like on them. does remind me of how um some of you guys were mentioning like early on that they they wrote the episodes kind of like a stage play and that looked like it could be part of like a, a stage play with the light on the guys like that i don't know what i'm doing right now <laughs> those spaces look crazy the captain's neck is broken Oh, wow. It takes some strength to break a man's neck, doesn't it? I don't think I could. There's no sign of life aboard this vessel. Oh, great. Well, where's everybody else? There's usually more than two people on the bridge. Dr. McCoy, check out the sick bay. I can't get an accurate fix on the Defy, Mr. Scott. But I know it's drifting away from us. Aye, I think you're right. Keep us within beaming range, but not too close. There's more people. Did this guy get bludgeoned? Oh man. Some of them are strapped down. Man, they were really going after each other or something. Like they What are they doing up there? Captain, just like what I found in life support. All dead. Hmm. Get back up here. Oh. Maybe seeing so much death is a bit much for, for little young Chekhov here. Or maybe whatever happened to them is happening to him. But he's, I mean, they're wearing protective gear that looks quite a bit more protective than what they were wearing in the naked time. Bones, can you tell me what they all died of? I'd say these people killed each other. The best I can do is get all the readings I can get and analyze them later. Is that guy like... He doesn't look solid. <gasps> He's not. What the devil? Um, we should probably Jim, get out of here. Get back up here on the double. Mr. Oh, Scott, it's going away. You got that transporter working yet, Mister? No, sir, not yet. Hmm? What's wrong with the transporter? Oh, it was just working, wasn't it? You mean what happened to the Defiant might be happening to the Enterprise? Primitive. Oh, great. Scott, stand by to beam us back. <laughs> that guy pops up. I've only got three of them working, and I'm not sure of those. One of you has got to wait. Request permission to remain, Captain. I could be completing the data. Request denied. Scotty, energized transporter. Oh, well, that's not good. Well, maybe it's having trouble, like, grabbing them because they're not... They're phasing out of existence, or whatever, they're... 
I don't know if grabbing is the correct term, but... Oh, oh there, there they are. Nothing. It <laughs> looks difficult to move around in those things. Um, that's not good. The fire just vanished. That's it. I've done all I can. There's nothing out there to grab a hold of and bring in. Well, Spock, looks like you're in charge. fabric of space is very weak here. If we disturb it, there will be no chance of retrieving the captain alive. I don't understand what's so special about this region of space. A certain brief periods of time, an area of their space overlaps. Is he feeling murderous intent? If we are not extremely careful, we shall lose the captain and become trapped ourselves. And I like him? Whoa. Whoa. He's like a wild animal. Oh, my goodness. Check off. Oh. There's that camera angle that I love. I think it's Sulu making sure his head doesn't hit the hard table. He seemed more angry than frightened. I think Mr. Chekhov to sickbay put him under restraint. Aw, Sulu's got to make sure his friend's okay. <laughs> Senator Hura is correct. There was murderous fury in Chekhov. Here we go again. Whatever it was that drove the crew of the Defiant to murder each other could be communicable. Spock, I think it might be a wise precaution to put some distance between us and the Defiant. If we are to recover the captain, we must not move. Spock, are you sure that Jim is still alive? Well, no, he's Schrodinger's Jim. We must catch him at the precise moment during the next interphase, or he will die. A vessel approaching on an intercept vector. Go to red alert. That's an unfamiliar vessel. Kind of cool looking. Looks fast. I'm receiving a visual signal. Transfer to main viewer. Is that a talking door? You are trespassing in the territorial annex of the Italian Assembly. We claim this territory and are prepared to use force if necessary. We are not interested in your display of force. <laughs> We're not interested. The other ship is interspatially trapped. It should reappear in one hour and 53 minutes. We request you stand by until then. Very well, Enterprise. But be correct. We do not tolerate deceit. Oh, what is that? We can only find the proper Whoa. filtering agent. Are we making some Sundays? Some banana splits? Negative. It's a third failure. Oh, no. It's happening to this guy. Oh, good job, Nurse Chapel. Oh, call for help or there you go. Good job. Lock on to Captain Kirk's coordinates and prepare to bring him aboard, Mr. Scott. Oh, has it been two hours already? Captain Kirk is not on his designated coordinates, Mr. Spock. Not there. Sensor readings are not corresponding to those we received the last time we saw the Defiant. Well, that thing was drifting, remember? So who knows where it is now? When is that interface going to happen? Theoretically, it already has happened. The space was disturbed by the Tholians. You can't wait for the next one. We've had another case like Chekhov. I have confidence that you will soon isolate the cause, Doctor. The cause is the area of space we're in. It's affecting the whole crew. Oh, that's not good. Now you've got to get this ship out of here. But what about Jim? A renowned Tholian punctuality. Well, they did not wait, did they? They didn't even give it a warning. I guess they already gave their warning two hours ago. Start the bridge. <laughs> what the devil's going on up there? What's the use of this battle, Spock? You've lost Jim. Take the ship out of here. Fire. <laughs> Bye. Oh, well, now we've done it. I can't do a thing with the Enterprise now. He's bound to drift. Maybe oh, right great. That Are you satisfied? Probably not. The decision to fight was logical. You should have known what could have happened. And done everything in your power to safeguard your crew. That is the mark of a starship captain. Like 
Jim. Please go at once to your laboratory and search for an antidote to the effects of this space. Especially since we can't move now, right? It's another Tholian, sir. Loski must have contacted them when he tried to intercept oh. us. Lieutenant Uhura, can you open a channel to the approaching vessel? They're refusing reception, sir. <gasps> They're kissing. Oh, are they going to shoot a super beam at us? Oh, no. Oh, they're going to make a web. They're like spiders. Space spiders. The Tholian web. If the Tholians are successful in completing this structure before we have completed our repairs, we shall not see home again. Look at them building their little web. Oh, time for a meeting. Oh, this is a cool little room. Doctor, your last report on an antidote on the effects of this space was negative. We're progressing. The urgency requires your personal attention in the laboratory. This service requires my personal attention, Mr. Spock. I gotta be here so I can yell at you when you make a decision I don't like. A few hours ago, the captain elected to remain on board the Defiant so that three members of his crew would have the best chance of returning safely to the Enterprise. His concern was not only for them, but for all the members of the crew of this ship. We must accept the fact that Captain Kirk is no longer alive. Oh no! Oh great. It's spreading even more. Jeez. Jeez, you just really flail about with that. Each of you must evaluate the loss in the privacy of your own thoughts. Attention! Holding a memorial for Kirk. Dismissed. Oh my goodness. There is a duty to be performed in the captain's quarters which requires our presence. It can wait, Doctor. The captain left a message tape. It will wait for a more suitable moment, Doctor. Are you afraid he'll change your present status? Captain's last order is top priority. Oh, I wonder if we're actually going to be able to hear it. The one thing that would have given his death meaning is the safety of the Enterprise. Now, you've made that impossible. I really came here to find out why you stayed and fought. I need not explain my rationale to you or to any other member of this crew. To try to s rescue Kirk. I was bound, legally and morally, to ascertain the captain's status. You mean to be sure if he was dead? Well, you made certain of that. That is enough, Doctor. This crew is to survive. I have to find an antidote to the space you've locked us into. So, get to work. The antidote probably doesn't concern you. Vulcans are probably immune, so just take your time. I mean, that has been the case. But if you get us out of this situation, they'll pin a medal on your chest and give you command of the Enterprise. Doctor, I am in command of the Enterprise. I would like to remedy that situation. Is he... Is McCoy acting like this because of the... Bones, Spock, <clears throat> Spock, use every scrap of logic you have to save the ship, but temper your judgment with intuitive insight. Seek out McCoy. Ask his advice. Bones, help him if you can. But remember, he is the captain. His decisions must be followed without question. We'll find that he is deserving of the same loyalty and confidence each of you have given me. Take care. Bones getting a little choked up over that. Spock, I, uh, I'm sorry. It does hurt, doesn't it? What would you have me say, Doctor? <gasps> is this Uhura's room? I've never seen it before. And look at what she's wearing. Oh, it's so peaceful in here. So beautifully decorated. <gasps> oh, not peaceful. Oh, great. We really do have to get out of here. <gasps> Was that really him? Or is she just seeing things? Is he, he's trapped in like somewhere. Is he trying to contact them? Doctor, I just think. We would all like to see him. He's alive. Of course. I did see him. I did. Mr. Spock. I'm going to sick pain. I'm not going mad. But she did have that pain. Although maybe that was what made it possible for him, her to see him. I don't know. We've lost another one. Scott, the captain! One of our crewmen just went berserk, but we have him under control for the moment. Oh, Chekhov. Oh, no. 
Well, they're being strapped down. Yes, it's beginning to spread generally throughout the ship. Are we any closer, Doctor? No, except I'm positive that it's a Theragun derivative. That's the answer. See, but the Defiant didn't have a, a McCoy and a Spock. Oh, she's strapped down too? Mr. Spock didn't believe me either, did he, Doctor? Well, nobody saw it but you, Hero. Then I didn't really see him, did I? I don't think so. Will I become like Chekhov, Doctor? No, no. We'll find an antidote. Poor thing. She's got to be so scared. We're beginning to interface. I'm all right. He's not all right. Keep an eye on him. Are we slipping into interspace? Negative. There he is. He must be almost out of oxygen. Mr. Spock, I've just seen Captain Kirk. In critical moments, men sometimes see exactly what they wish to see. Do you suppose they're seeing Jim because they've lost confidence in you? <laughs> Jeez. If Scotty goes under, that's the finish of whatever chance we have of getting the Enterprise out of here. You can best serve them in your laboratory. Spock! Oh, my. Must be this space is getting to me, too. I, I know it's nothing you've done, Spock. I, I'm sorry. I understand, Doctor. Oh, no. It's affecting him, too? Spock! Look! That's a bit... <laughs> I don't know if you can fit that in your mouth. <laughs> Don't make that. Don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look at him. He's okay. So they all see him. <laughs> oh, this is funny. <laughs> Well, he's alive out there somewhere. Am I oh, all right, Doctor? She's been crying. Yes, Aurora, you're fine. Captain Kirk's alive? We all saw him. The captain's still alive. Oh. Results of the last Theragun test ready for you, Doctor. I'll be right there. The next interphase will occur here. Can you be ready? That'll be about 20 minutes. Uh, she'll be back together. Okay, let's get our captain back. Tranya? What have you got there? You found the antidote, Doctor. Yes, and I've ordered it oh. orally or intravenously for everyone aboard the ship. And Sim Shekhov was affected so early. He is his smiling self again, and I've discharged him from sick bay. Yay! What is it? It's a diluted Theragun derivative. A nerve gas used by the Klingons. And deadly, too. What are you thinking of, Doctor? You're trying to kill us all. You've drank worse. Mixed with alcohol, it merely deadens certain nerve inputs to the brain. Oh, well, any decent blend of scotch will do that. <laughs> Good slug of this, and you could hit a man with phaser stun, and he'd never feel it or even know it. <laughs> He's like, say less. <laughs> Does it make a good mix with scotch? It should. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> Scotty! <laughs> okay, well, Chekhov should Welcome be back, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. Back in action. Yay! Mr. Spock, they're getting ready to close the window. Interface in 10 seconds. Ready to transport on my order. Come on. Oh, God. We're being pulled out of here. Try to maintain position, Mr. Sulu. Web. Negative, Ensign. Utilizing ship's power has thrown us clear of it. At once, sir. Have we lost the captain? We shall soon see, Lieutenant. Since the captain was locked into our transporter beam, he should have been drawn here with us. There he is. Mr. Spock, it's him. Now, Doctor. So, is he still in another space time? Space place? <laughs> hey! Welcome home, Jim. I wonder what he was doing that whole time. I had a whole universe to myself. Oh. There was absolutely no one else. He was just floating around? How did you two get along without me? Oh, we managed. Spock gave the orders, and I found the answers. Good. No, no problems between you? None worth reporting, Captain. 
Only such minor disturbances as are inevitable when humans are involved. <laughs> what do you mean, that when humans become involved with Vulcan's gem? Well, I hope my last <laughs> orders were helpful in solving any problem. Orders, Captain? The last taped orders. Oh, those orders. We never had a chance to listen to them. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope we won't have similar opportunities to test those orders which you never heard. I guess, first of all, one thing that I'd like to quickly get out of the way is that I think I've mentioned it before, but I would love for us to get away from the the crew of the Enterprise is infected by something that's making them go crazy, violent, combative, flailing about. For me, it's getting a little bit overdone, but I'm going to try not to dock points on this episode for that because if I watched this episode in season one, it probably wouldn't have bothered me. But in season three, I'm kind of getting a little bit tired of it. But aside from that, I don't think I have too many complaints. There were a lot of things to really love about this episode. I don't know if it's like it w completely wowed me, but I feel like it was pretty solid. First of all, those spacesuits looked so wild, pretty amazing. Whoever designed and constructed those, major props. They looked a lot more functional than the w stuff that they were wearing in um, The Naked Time, where it, it's not even airtight. But of course, in this case, it needed to be so that they could get oxygen. It's kind of like a spacesuit as opposed to just like a biohazard suit. But anyways, that was really cool. I also really enjoyed the screen time that Uhura got in this episode. I thought she was fantastic. She got to play a larger role than I think we usually see her in. And all I could think about was just how beautiful she looked all the time. And I love to see her in different outfits, in the beautiful dress she was wearing, or even in like the medical gown that they had her in. And she has, whenever she speaks, she has this, this poise. The way she carries herself, but also like her voice that I really like. How she, I don't know. I just, I don't know how to describe it. And again, Spock has control over the ship as acting captain. In this case, they were under the impression that he might be the permanent captain. Um, with not believing that Kirk was going to make it back. And then we had a little memorial service, which was short and sweet and of course they had to get back to work and figure out how to get out of their situation but i can't believe that you know now that i think about it, i can't believe that spock was trying to tell mccoy to go back to work and not take a few minutes to have a moment of silence for cap for the captain and whenever spock gets in command he always has problems doesn't he he really seems to not have that magnetic personality that I mean obviously but I feel like he tends to get a lot of pushback when it, from from at least one person when he's in charge lately it's been bones and in this case again it's been bones and bones was really getting in on Spock again for his decisions and things like that and of course Spock's doing his best and Bones lets his emotions, you know, maybe get a little bit the best of him. One of the things that kind of threw me a little bit, and maybe it's just my knowledge of, like, the characters isn't as great as it could be because I've only seen each episode, like, once or twice. But I feel like, and I could be wrong, and I'd have to really, because this is a thought that just occurred to me just now. So I would probably have to go back to watch like all the episodes over and really like analyze his character and how he's written but I feel like his character might be written the most inconsistently of the the main crew um definitely of the main three I think because I think Kirk is pretty consistent Spock is pretty consistent and the thing about Bones that co is consistent is that 
he has these emotional outbursts and and he always has something to say about uh what spock says or what spock does or what decisions he's making but aside from that i feel like maybe it's a little bit inconsistent from writer to writer with how he is i don't know i don't even know if i should say this because i just thought of it right now but like so in the paradise syndrome episode he was like we gotta save kirk like forget the asteroid forget the planet all we gotta do is get captain kirk back we gotta find him and now in this episode spock's trying to find kirk and doing everything he can to save him because they they don't know if he's still alive or not he's like schrodinger's kirk you know and bones is like kind of the opposite this time leave him we've lost him don't try anymore we got to get the ship out of here and i don't know it kind of stuck out to me maybe i'm thinking about it wrong maybe i just i need to rewatch some episodes to see that there's more like consistency there or maybe maybe there isn't i don't know but let me know what you guys think like do you guys think all the characters are written pretty evenly and consistently or do you think some characters tend to be a little bit more difficult for the writers to kind of agree on exactly how they are and i feel like if i had to pick one i'd say bones might be like the inconsistent one really the only other time that i had an issue that i can recall off the top of my head is um scotty in the who mourns for adonis or adonais or however you want to say it when he kept throwing himself at apollo uh, against kirk's orders that i thought felt out of character but otherwise i've never really noticed anything and i wouldn't say that bones is ever like completely out of character but maybe just a little bit inconsistent i don't know you know maybe i'm dumb maybe i'm just tired it is late but we did really have some excellent scenes with Spock and Bones in this one. So we saw that Bones really couldn't trust like Spock's decisions and his motives even because he was saying like, oh, he wants to be in charge of the Enterprise. And then Spock was just trying to like tell him to go back and do his work and wasn't really wanting to listen. And then when they heard Kirk's tape, when they uh, played back Kirk's message to them, he knew them so well that he knew that they would be butting heads <laughs> and that they would be having some issues and he kind of told them exactly what they needed to hear bones spock's in charge listen to him help him if he needs it and spock please i trust that you will make the correct logical decisions but if you feel like you need help with the human intuition and that kind of thing then please listen to bones and i thought that everybody was holding it together really well thinking that kirk was beyond saving and probably already dead i mean they held a memorial service for him and everything and i was wanting to see some kind of somebody slipping through the cracks kind of showing a little bit of of sadness or grief and i got a little bit of that from bones which i'm always very appreciative right at the end of that message listening to his captain's final message to him and deforest kelly is really good at that he's really good at kind of the subtle emotion it's not overblown it's not doesn't feel forced or anything like that it's just very kind of just a little quiver of the lips or a little break in his voice or maybe like a, a wavering of his speech it's really really excellent one thing that i didn't really understand was the tholians like i'm not really sure they even needed to be in the episode I wasn't really sure like what they were adding to the episode. I didn't feel any pressure from like them building the web around us necessarily. And we stopped having contact with them. I like 
when we have an antagonist that that we have like a communication with a back and forth and when they went silent on us and then just started building this web around us which to be fair looked really cool but i don't really like the antagonists to be silent i kind of like the the battle of the wits things like that and lastly i think it might be a while before i get the image of kirk trying to eat that giant hot dog or whatever it was i don't know what the heck but it looked really strange or like him like floating around like this or floating outside of the uh in space on their screen <laughs> that was like it was it was really silly looking and and funny and i don't i don't think it was supposed to be funny but it was funny kind of like the knives in and the children shall lead that um sulu was seeing i thought that was hilarious i loved that and yeah i loved <laughs> i loved this i i do wish we could have seen more of captain kirk the episode definitely felt like it was missing something for a lot of it because you know the spock as much as i love him he doesn't really have the charisma of kirk and the lack of his presence was definitely felt but yeah very interesting episode um what about you guys? What do you think? And thank you guys for watching and listening to me ramble for probably way too long on this one. I will see you guys next time. I look forward to reading your comments. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you guys next time. Okay, bye.